Them yeah. speed cameras. They take it serious. Because imagine this. In order to have a speed camera set up, they gotta be license plates. Okay, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. The license plates also have to be connected to your address. Mm -hmm. which is really fascinating too because a lot of the stereotypes for african countries are surrounding us being in the huts how would a hut have an address mount bishoke is a marathon mm -hmm. it definitely isn't a race you have to come equipped with the electrolytes maybe a gallon of water a long sleeve literally five miles away from the area that we're walking in Mm -hmm. Got gorillas, like real live gorillas. They tall as shit, mm -hmm. big as shit, ready to knock your head off. From the perspective of the soldiers that were parading the Lake Kibu, mm -hmm. when they saw my camera and how I was taking pictures of the environment, they yeah. they easily thought that I was a reporter or simply an enemy. So they come through to us on, in the middle of a lake. In the middle. They of make lake. us come to them. Middle of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's and actually very, scary. very extremely intimidating. There, because their boat got a turret. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They right? were it serious. Had the, they had the big joint, big guns. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And they was ready to take us. They was ready to take us out if we acted some type of way. Did you tell your family about that oh, happening? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they that was like, kind of scary. I but in Cameroon, in Cameroon, that. they would have just killed us. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! That's not funny. That's not funny. <laughs> Welcome back, my beautiful, intelligent, resilient gems. It's your girl, Niadi E, aka Mighty Intellectual. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about my trip to Kigali, Rwanda. In today's video, it's not just going to be me. I actually have a very special guest who also went with me to Kigali. And he's going to join me in just a second on camera. Actually, now he's going to join me. <laughs> and we're going to talk about experience together. I'll let him introduce himself first before we get into the video. Who are you? Hello, friends. What's up? My name is Dr. Flex, and I'm coming to you live, possibly from a place near you, possibly right next to you. It could be that you're in Kigali right now. It could be that you're in Maryland like we are. But we're going to share a whole host of experiences that you can definitely connect to immediately immediately we're gonna be talking about our first impressions of kigali but one disclaimer we want to put out there is that we weren't there for like months at a time right so we just want to be careful with what we're saying is law we're just giving you all our opinion about our experience and we didn't get to experience the entire kigali so this is just the kigali that we experienced so take what you need and leave what you don't i would super agree yeah. We we went to some very extravagant places outside of Kigali as well, mm -hmm. but that doesn't represent all of Rwanda either, mm -hmm. and it doesn't represent all of Africa. Take all the information that we deliver to you guys, mash it up, put it in a bottle, and drink it up, and see how you can use it for yourselves. Yeah. Yes, we're going to get right into it. We're comparing the experience in Rwanda to other African countries that we visited. I've been to South Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria, and you've been to... I've been to Cameroon. Yeah, so we're yeah. just like drawing on our experience as compared to other countries. So this video could be really good for you if you are looking to visit Rwanda anytime soon, whether that's this year, next year, the following year. If you've never visited East Africa at all, but you've been thinking about it, this is a video for you. So let's get right into it. So why did we actually end up going to Kigali, Rwanda? You should go first. Or why did you end up going? It was a dark and stormy day. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy day oh in God. the middle of January 2023. And a young lady from my university named Jessica told me that she was getting married. I told her a whole host of congratulations messages and all of that. But here's the kicker. She told me that she was going to have her wedding day in Rwanda. Go, Jessica. <laughs> Jessica is a dear friend of mine. We went to school together. She was the president of our African Student Association. Mm -hmm. So, well, shout out to those. Shout out to the presidents. At these colleges. 
You need that. The the African Student Association presidents they showed a lot of the students what it meant to be an African on campus. Mm -hmm. And as she invited all her friends to come to her wedding in Africa, she showed everybody else what it meant to be an African who actually represents and wants to take talents back to Africa. It was such a beautiful request. It was such a beautiful thought process. So on that dark and stormy day in, Jan in January. I gotta be dark and stormy. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought about it myself. Were you not gonna go originally? Because yeah, that's the together. thing. Oh, I didn't know that. That's okay. the thing. I'm glad you end up going. A whole host of research had to be done first. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, we did the research for you guys. Nonetheless, in January, I didn't know anything about Rwanda. I didn't know anybody from Rwanda. Closest thing was a family friend that lived in Tanzania. But Tanzania is not the same as Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So as she tells everybody about the wedding expectations, where she's going to be doing her traditional wedding, because her traditional wedding occurred in a different place than the actual wedding. As we put all the logistics mm -hmm. together, that's when I realized that Rwanda could actually be a beautiful place to visit. Mm -hmm. And I would have a reason to go there. It's always nice when you're traveling and you have a reason to go to whatever destination it is or like people that you're going to see because i feel like you always if you're traveling you always have like a reason you know but i get what you're saying like people to see right people to see things like, to do specifically yeah people to hang out with that makes sense and that was a crutch that was a major deciding factor on me going to rwanda because I might not have necessarily have pulled up to Rwanda by myself without any final event or final destination being in the itinerary. Shout out to Jessica because her holy matrimony with her partner. It was so beautiful. And you guys are going to be able to see exactly how beautiful it is mm -hmm. in the upcoming clips. But the idea of having a holy matrimony on the motherland with all the spirits of our ancestors guiding us throughout the continent, throughout our travels, mm -hmm. all of that was enough to convince me to purchase my ticket. And I purchased it kind of late. <laughs> She told you about it in January. She told me about it in January. <laughs> I ain't decided until like June or something. Oh, wow. I didn't decide until the summer. Yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, that was the major reason why I was <laughs> deciding to go over to Rwanda. Thank you for going. Uh, snap, 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 snap. What about you, Niyadi? That was such an elaborate, like, description and story. Mine is, like, a lot shorter. Wait, before I say why, I actually didn't think about, like, her contributing to Rwanda, like, in the form of her wedding. Because she had her wedding at, was it Chus Kigali? Chus Kigali. So her decided to have it have it there with her like directly supporting the establishment in Rwanda. So that's cool. Shout out to Jessica. Okay, so why did I go? I wasn't necessarily going to go to Rwanda. That was not gonna be my next country. I was thinking about Kenya and maybe going back to South Africa. But when he brought it up to me, I was like, oh, because typically I solo travel. I kind of prefer it that way. But the idea of going with you <laughs> and going for a wedding, like he said, going for an additional reason, like having a destination, a specific event to attend while there. I did not like the idea of the price. We talked about that a little bit. The ticket I got, it was at least what, like, I would say about... 1k how much did you pay for your ticket <laughs> we could we could we could we could actually go more oh, okay, in depth okay, okay. about that yes, but yes my ticket was about 700 dollars okay, and i okay. could definitely put some game into Please. plenty of people's minds on how they can find minor small discounts in order to make the trip me. more possible I feel like, oh. Uh, oh my gosh. It was last minute. I decided yeah. last minute as well. I didn't even know about the trip until after 
you know, after a while. So anyway, I love the idea of being able to go with him and like his friends would be there. His friend was getting married, which it was really beautiful. I love the idea because my goal is to get to travel to all 54 African countries before I leave this earth. And yay. And uh, so I love the idea of that. And then, uh, although it wasn't Kenya, Kigali is close to Kenya. So I was like, mm, it's, you know, it's pretty close. I didn't like the idea of the pricing. I was like, mm, should I be spending this money right now? I don't know if I actually want to go. But as we continue to talk, I was like, we talked about how it could be like an investment for myself and like experience in Rwanda. So yeah, I decided to go because I didn't know anything about Rwanda. I thought it would be a good learning opportunity on top of all the things I already mentioned. And uh, it's another one of my African countries. Checked off my list and I got to learn about the culture. And we'll talk about it in one of our- Later clips. One of our categories. I didn't know anything about the Rwanda genocide and that was one of the most fascinating parts of visiting Kigali and getting to explore the memorial museum for me the history part so i'm glad that i went i'm glad that you decided to go because not that i wouldn't have gone to kigali rwanda i just don't think i would have gone as soon as i went it would have probably been later so thank you thank you thank you thanks for coming okay we um, had fun do we, we did we had a lot of fun we did we did yeah so the first three categories we'll discuss on my channel we'll discuss transportation <laughs> infrastructure and then we'll also discuss excursions okay and we got some stories okay for excursions because they tried to get over on us big time but we'll tell you about that so the first two will be on my channel but make sure you watch this video all the way through and then after you'll head over to my channel is mighty intellectual where you are right now and you need to make sure you like you comment and you what subscribe and then you'll head over to his channel to get the final three categories what's your channel my channel is called dr flex dr dash flex hopefully the youtube algorithm is really like working for me now yeah my channel name has changed from dr dash dash flex to dr dash flex and pretty oh, soon I might I might just get straight up Dr. Flex. Yeah. Oh no. People couldn't find you with the two two dashes? I gotta upload a lot more. Oh, okay, okay. More videos coming soon just to flood the search bar and search history area. But three categories will be discussed on my channel. Make sure you tune in to both of our contents. Yeah. And the three categories that I'll be discussing. Can we not tell them? So they can go over. Maybe. I'll sneak it in. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> the, and the sneak in the sneak in is cost of living. <laughs> okay, he wants to tell y'all. Okay. Crazy, crazy concept, right? You got but you gotta think about it because you need to know how much you're gonna be spending on this trip. Yeah. You need a just to live. Work. Yeah. Word is born. So check it. Cost of living, weather. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good one. What's you know the what the third one, one is? <laughs> I, I mean, I know. I know. What it is. I Wait, cost of living, weather, and security. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know? Because you got to. Oh, of course. Did you know what the third one was? Hell yeah. I forgot. I keep I, it in the back of my head. I for, he didn't know what the third one was. I forgot. Okay, so you'll watch the first three here and then you'll head over to his channel to watch the last three, okay? We'll make sure that his channel is also linked in the description box so you won't be able to miss it. So please make sure you go support his channel after you watch them here. And you better tell your subscribers to come support my channel. Y'all already, already know. We're gonna get straight into the category. So our first category is going to be... infrastructure take what you need and leave what you don't so one of the things that shocked me and i had done a little research we had done a little research before going was compared to the other african countries i've been to it seemed like more developed i noticed that there were paved roads everywhere 
And I did also notice I was in my Uber on the way from the airport. Like I noticed that the Rwandans that I came into contact with, they're super proud of that fact. They're proud that they're developed. They're proud that like they've gotten past the period of the Rwandan genocide. So they take pride in their country, which was really cool to see. So the paved road and going along with the road, I noticed that they had like the regular or I don't want to say regular, regular, but the light system with the, the lights and then um, they had cameras so they don't play about the speed and things like that like they want to make sure that you're doing what you you're supposed to be doing and then crosswalks have crosswalks and uh, people also like abide by the rules like they take the rules really seriously when it comes to like the road and driving speed and things like that so i was just really shocked that it was that together when we got to Kigali. So that was like one of my first impressions, like, wow, this is an African country that is really, it seems really organized. And that's comparing, you know, Ghana and South Africa and Nigeria. So that was like one of mine. I did want to talk about the infrastructure too. You opened up some great points. One of the points that I wanted to to discuss was them yeah, speed cameras. They take it serious. Because imagine this. In order to have a speed camera set up, they got to be license plates. Okay, that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. The license plates also have to be connected to your address. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, true, true, true. Because My, they have to send it somewhere. Like they got to they gotta they gotta send city. a bill somewhere, which is really fascinating too because... A lot of the stereotypes for African countries are surrounding us being in the huts. Mm -hmm. How would a hut have an address? Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, I'm from Cameroon. I've been back to Cameroon three times. I understand that though there are plenty of political reasons why the country might be acting a certain type of way, we're still, we're still just as civilized as anybody else mm -hmm. could be. <laughs> Um, security cameras and speed cameras, of course. Mm -hmm. The speed cameras put me at ease because it's like, hey, if I'm walking in the middle of the night, I know that drivers have an incentive mm -hmm. to drive extremely slow in order to make sure that no one gets hit in the middle of the day, in the middle of the night, etc. And mind you, this speed limit is like you know, 40 miles per hour mm -hmm. in the city or in plenty of highways. So that was really beautiful. Uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about for the infrastructure is as soon as y'all touch down, y'all are amazed because infrastructure includes the airport uh, <laughs> how, how, was your, how was your experience about the airport i'm trying to remember I'm, oh wait, wait wait no i remember I, 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 wait, I, wait, we'll wait. show you some clips of the airport too <laughs> wait yeah. i just remember the airport was really small it was really small but it was modern yeah that's all i remember from the airport but it was yeah it was really small it was like one it was one terminal right one if I'm remembering correctly, uh, it it's, was really it's, small. it's a possibility. Right. It's a possibility. It, yeah. It's not necessarily as large as your JFK in New York or your Dulles in DC. Right. Nonetheless, it's an international airport, so plenty yeah. of plenty of people can land over there, and they'll have an easy enough time getting out of their airplane on the runway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like you got out on the runway too, right? Yeah. Okay. I did. All right. Yeah. Bet. Getting out on the runway was so sexy. Like, <laughs> Not sexy. <laughs> because when I stepped out, one of the first things that I was able to see was the horizon and how the African heat just changes the color of the atmosphere. That was really beautiful. So coming out and seeing that the, that the airport was extremely clean. I'm talking about they come out with some wax and wax oh, the floors. They really keep the area nice and tidy as niyadi said all the roads are paved they look a lot better than roads in baltimore oh my gosh okay that is the part if you have a bias about visiting the continent and what am i trying to say maybe if, if you have a bias towards visiting africa because you're afraid of you, how the roads might be or you think it's like not clean or this that and the third I think that's an important point that he mentioned that like the roads are cleaner than some of the roads here in the US. Like some of the cities in certain countries in Africa are safer than some of the cities we have here in the US. So like, I like to tell people that I've experienced this firsthand, especially when I started visiting Ghana, 
like you feel what you don't know and when i first started visiting everything looked the same to me so you know i felt a little bit of anxiety but now that i've visited and and even when i go to other countries i feel this calm sense of peace like i'm not afraid because now i understand that like this person is doing this because that's the culture in this country or this person is speaking this aggressively because that's how they talk to each other nobody's fighting so it's like you fear what you don't know and when you like take the leap of faith and just go ahead and visit you get to learn things like kigali is one of the safest and cleanest cities in the world boom yes i need to know if that word is biases <laughs> <laughs> or biases which one is it biases biases your bias these. Big B words. I don't know, but you said something else that I thought was really good. Really good. I didn't want to cut you off, so I was trying to hold it. Airport. We got the airport looking absolutely dandy. Yes. Fantastic. Got the convention center that looked really beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They had like some some kind of was it an African league or a basketball league that they just started? They started it in Kigali or something like that. I think it happened last year. You have to look it up. Maybe we should look it up for you as well. But there is some African basketball league that the NBA partnered with that they had quartered or started in Kigali. I wanted to mention the part about cleanliness because he mentioned the streets being very clean. And I think that's the part of the infrastructure as well. So before going, I did see quite a few videos that talked about how it's mandated. And I got to speak with one of my Uber drivers once I left the airport. They literally have mandated cleaning. I think it's once a month on a Saturday or Sunday every month. And if you are found not cleaning, you can get in serious trouble in Kigali. And while some people might say, oh, that's like dictatorship. Like how can you control if I'm, I think that's so important. Like, because if you go to, Ghana is beautiful. I love Ghana, but there is a lot of trash. There is a lot of trash. So if other countries did something like this, I think you would like make people want to help their own community. But even here, like in some areas, I say this all the time, like if I see trash, especially like in the hood in the US, if you see trash in your community, that's all you see. You like, oh, okay, it's not a problem if I throw another piece of trash out because it's already trash everywhere. Like there's, but if you don't see any trash anywhere, you're less likely to throw trash out. So I think that's a really good initiative they have in Kigali. And they take that really serious about their cleanliness. Like it's looked down upon to like throw something out or to treat the environment terribly. Ooh, I think you should mention the farms. We saw people, I think that's a part Boom. of it. Boom, the farms that Niyadi is referring to, that was towards Mount Bishoke, definitely towards the outskirts of Kigali. Nonetheless, it is considered infrastructure regarding how Rwanda moves. So in these areas closer to the volcanoes of Rwanda, almost every single household participated in doorstep to road farms, meaning that instead of you having a driveway, instead of you having a sidewalk, crosswalk, etc., probably got some type of garden. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Uh. These gardens could be based on what the actual inhabitant is selling, or it could be part of their business, or it could be a part of their main source of food, which is extremely smart and make sure that the entire area and the entire area is, is less polluted. Mm. Because with all this greenery, <laughs> even though the cars, and we're gonna talk about transportation later. I know, we haven't even <laughs> even Even though the cars and whatnot might not have the same emission quality, and they might not be as up to date with how clean the emissions from the cars are and upkept. As all that gas and soot gets sent out of the cars, out of the motorcycles, all this greenery and shrubs and vegetables that are in the area are sucking out CO2 from the area so that the country is so much cleaner. Mm -hmm. It smells mm -hmm. good. I mean, pretty often you might have the scent of like burning tires. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Burning meat. Someone's killing a cow out there and just launching that joint into the fire. But nonetheless, all these farms and whatnot just take out 
all types of bad smells out of the air and that was so beautiful wow we really been on this infrastructure one because there's a lot of good things that we saw i would just unless you have another one i would just like wrap it up with they use cards in rwanda like i don't think we came to a place where they didn't take a credit card so i think that's important to know if you're thinking about visiting because a lot of african countries are like cash based so and i know a lot of people have an issue with that they prefer to use their credit card so you won't have that issue once you go to kigali rwanda most there were no places that didn't take card right absolutely so i mm -hmm. think the machine was what like an npc what oh, was it what was we, it called when we went to the excursion um, we had us pay is that what facts you're talking about? what we're referring to is a device that you can use in order to like do contactless payments yeah they had all the things or chips and we have those here like i see sometimes at the nail salons they have those too mm -hmm. so, like, portable yeah. completely portable each time that your card was charged when you would look at your credit card bill it would have a great title like let's say that you went on a tour it would be like rwanda tours let's say that you went to a grocery corner store even the smallest store had contactless payments so you don't even necessarily have to walk around with your wallet which was extremely valuable to me yeah that is going to be a wrap for our infrastructure section these are just a few things that we noticed some of our impressions for that in Kigali. Now we're gonna move on to our transportation. What do we think about transportation? For me, I just really love the motorcycles. We had a really good time riding the motorcycles from where we were staying to, I think we went to the genocide. No, did we ride the motorcycles to the genocide museum? No, uh, we went over to the genocide museum. We On went the motorcycle? to local oh to the market <gasps> we did okay yes that's what we did and yeah i just really enjoyed the motorcycle it was easy like it seems like there's somebody driving like wherever you are up and down the street all you got to do is kind of wave your hand and they'll pull over and i don't remember how much it costs to ride the motorcycle but it was not a lot y'all it was not a lot now as far as the, the motorcycle or public transportation that is an area where you do have to have like physical bills you can't do card for that one but make sure you have what is that money called do you remember that money i do not know what they we're what gonna, they're called we're gonna look up very quickly what they're rwandese they're rwandese so you have to make sure you have i don't know i actually don't know wait we're gonna look up to see what their money is called but that is an area where you definitely need to make sure you have physical bills so we rode it to the museum and we rode it to the market which the market was so fun did you figure you you looked up the money i didn't we went over to kigali city market in okay. niam niami rambo niami rambo <laughs> Yeah, the, the riding the motorcycles, I it was just so fun for me because it was, I don't know, you could just see all of the nature. They're called Rwandan Franks. RWF. But I was saying that like the motorcycles, I really love riding the motorcycles. I think that's probably my favorite form of transportation in Kigali because you can see all of the nature. Like they have so many like mountains and hills and so on and so forth. And it was just beautiful to take it all in while I was on the motorcycle. So I suggest while you are there, definitely get on one of those motorcycles. It doesn't cost much, it's safe. They all look alike so you know that you are riding a legitimate public transportation vehicle. Yeah, did you have anything for transportation? So one thing that I'll mention about transportation mm -hmm is that there is a requirement for these motorcycles for you to wear a helmet. Oh, yes. Uh, that is so beautiful. And it was most likely instituted by their city representatives, their city council members. They probably thought that like, if everybody is wearing a helmet, it will reduce the amount of people that get into accidents. Mm -hmm. It will make them more self-conscious about how they're driving and how they're acting on the motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And the motorcycles are really similar to taxis, mm -hmm. just the same way that you would hail a taxi in new york like you would hail these motorcycle drivers in the same way and particularly if you're from a, another country coming into rwanda you probably got a certain type of clothing and like a style so the drivers sort of like know to come through to you mm -hmm. they expect that you might need a ride somewhere and additionally if you wanted to go let's say one mile 
two mile, three miles from the destination that you're at right now, it would be about 78 cents USD or a thousand Rwandan francs. Take note of that because of course, like at some point, someone's gonna like try and haggle you. They will, y'all. But that happens. haggling is gonna happen everywhere. It happens, yeah. They know that you're not from there and they can tell from your accent from your clothing, like it will happen. So do your research before going. And I mean, you could get upset about it, but at the same time, it's just like the US dollar is worth a lot more than uh, different African currencies. So it's just like, I get it. They trying to get it how they live. Like I get it, but yeah, just do your research before. So that doesn't happen to you. Mm -hmm. That's it that's for all, transportation, right? That's all, I, that's, that's all, I, that's all we all got. got, okay, so. <laughs> We love the motorcycles and the helmets and yeah, let's go into our next section. Oh, this is a fun one. Hey. Now we're gonna talk to you all about our excursions, okay? We got a couple things to say about that. Maybe we could just go through the list of things that we actually did. Should we start with? Mount Bisoke. <laughs> Right. Mount Bisoke was our first destination. How did we get our tour guide for Mount Bisoke? It was so, his fault, y'all. <laughs> oh, our tour guide for Mount Bisoke. Our driver. Our driver for Mount Bisoke. Okay, boom. So this sort of connects to transportation. So like okay. we just we just linked the shit like like that. Yeah, yeah. Together. So we had gotten our driver to take us to Mount Bisoke from Kigali. But how did we get the driver? How did we get From in contact? From our hotel that we were staying at. <laughs> and since you're getting it from the hotel there is an incentive they want to like put their own people on mm -hmm. so i think throughout the times that they were trying to put their own people on they also like took advantage of the fact that we were from the states mm -hmm. they also took advantage of the fact that we didn't know exactly where we were going yeah and the rules of our destination so when we were going to mount Bishoke, we should have arrived at 7 a.m mm -hmm. tell us why our driver brought us to our destination at like 10 can i tell them why 11 yeah so the thing is we've never been to mount Bishoke or any of the other places so we would think as the tour guide they have the best judgment they know all of these places best so we didn't know that we needed to be at mount Bishoke by like 6 a.m mind you it was probably like a four hour, hour drive from where we were staying but our tour guide and driver wanted us to he said that we could leave by what like five or something he wanted us to be downstairs basically he wanted us to be downstairs very early but we still wouldn't have gotten to mount Bisoke in time that we needed to be there they require that you be there by a certain time because it takes a long time to hike up that mountain and to get down before you know night falls and we didn't know that but our driver did he's been doing this for a while he did so he tells us to come down and we get to the mountain and then what like we get to the mountain and they just refuse us immediately they're like yeah the, you guys are not hiking today we get there too late we're there too late he knows this so we're getting frustrated because we're like did you not i mean okay wait before we got to the mountain though we did have this really beautiful experience so should we pause and then come back to the mountain about the about the kids yes oh, okay. so before okay before we got to the mountain we're gonna put pictures or videos I know I had pictures on the screen, mm -hmm. but before we got to Mount Basoke, we stopped because there was like another mountain in the background. It literally did not look real, y'all. It did not look real. So we stopped and we got out and then there were a bunch of kids over there and they just started like coming up to us and talking and trying to take pictures. And it was just so beautiful. It was just so beautiful. We met our friend Oscar. And <laughs> Oscar, Damn. he spoke. The other kids didn't really speak, you know, English fluently. And some of them did, but it was like a little bit broken. But Oscar spoke very fluent English. And he was just really curious about us. Especially, I was about to say Flex. Especially Noel. What do you want to be called on this channel? Flex or Noel? Either or. Mutually <laughs> Especially exclusive. Dr. Flex. Noel. Yeah, he was very interested in talking to him. And you want to say what you felt about the experience? It was so, it was so nice. I'm about to shed a tear. Yeah, it was beautiful. So as we're driving to Mount Bishoke, 
where the entrance is. We stop midway so that we can take pictures, but we're we're stopping in front of a more rudimentary like rural mm -hmm. area, complete with like they had like mm -hmm. livestock, right? Yeah, like yeah, cows they did. and they did. pigs and sheep like and chickens. Deal. Just walking, walking the areas. Mm -hmm. So when we come out there, it's it's really farmland ish. Mm -hmm. We start taking our pictures, and Oscar and Fam, <laughs> so sweet, so come cute, come out just to see what we're doing, and we invite them over so that they can take pictures with us. And it was so beautiful because we're all African, bro. Like mm -hmm. as soon as you see the black skin, there's a little bit of like warmth that you feel in mm -hmm. your heart. And even though like we might not have been able to communicate the same way because we're not speaking the same yeah. language, a smile goes energy. a long way. It's yeah. an energy amongst the diaspora. It's just an energy. You're my For brother, sure. I'm your sister. You know what I'm saying? It's an energy. That was one of the highlight moments. For you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. Yeah, it's beautiful. Total strangers. And then we ended up connecting. Yeah, so beautiful. It's like we're so different, but we're also so similar at the same time. Oh, okay. So that was a beautiful moment before we got to Mount Basoke. But we're still t telling you all about our excursion. So we get to the mountain. We can't hike up the mountain or whatever. The tour guide is looking all like he didn't know or something. And there was just like a breakdown in communication. There was confusion or something. But a part of our tour was, was supposed to be to go to Mount Basoke, hike that one, and then go to Lake Kivu. And Lake Kivu was a little bit further than Mount Basoke. And Lake Kivu is like a tourist attraction that you have to see when you go to Rwanda. So we like, we gotta go to Lake Kivu. Like that's why we came out here. And so he just didn't make it clear that like, if we went to Lake Kivu, we would have to pay for an additional day because basically we had to stay overnight but all of it was supposed to be included in our tour and we agreed to go to lake kivu without knowing that we would have to pay for an additional night so we went to lake kivu lake kivu was so beautiful we paid for our own hotel and all of that and stayed overnight and then we came back early early the next morning to hike up mount basoke in the correct time so we had to be there like before 6 a.m to hike up the mountain and we did and it was beautiful it sucked that like he kind of got over on us as far as like the pricing for the tour but we did hike the mountain i was about to go to the top but <laughs> But John wanted to come down. His friend John had gotten up further than us. Right. He wanted to come down. So we didn't even get to get up like to the point he was. So we ended up coming back. There was a situation with my finger. I swiped a plant. Yadi was hustling and bustling. <laughs> I was trying to get up the mountain. <laughs> up this mountain. <laughs> up this, it's a volcano, yo. It's yes, a volcano. So literally, it's three miles straight up. Yeah. Ain't no paths. Ain't no paved cement. It's literally just mud in trails yeah and it was raining that day it was raining that day nice little drizzle you know yeah, what i'm saying we had lot. the raincoats on and whatnot but niati had swiped across a stingy needle plant yeah tour guides that were with us they were extremely athletic mm -hmm. but it's not like they were well versed in english yeah they to the point that they could just let us understand what was going on mm -hmm. so she had thrust her arm upon it and like it was a media no. burning sensation right <laughs> yes it was it was like burning and it would not go away and i wasn't sure what was actually happening i realized like we were in a completely different place and i just started freaking out like i was like oh my gosh what's gonna happen to my finger oh my god oh my god <laughs> i was like getting emotional it was a lot and then it was like on top of that i was already tired hiking up this mountain slash volcano and um, it was just a lot in play and then he was leaving me so <laughs> So I was just, I, it was a lot going on. It was a lot going on on that mountain. But one of the guys ended up giving me a glove and that kind of helped me and Noel we talk and that kind of calmed me down. It was just kept going. But by the time we like got to a certain point, his friend John was really tired. He said, once you got higher up, it was hard to breathe. So he came down and we all just went back down. So we didn't make it to the top, but it was like a really dope experience. And I would want to hike another mountain. That was fun. For sure. Yeah. Mount Bishoke is a mm -hmm. marathon. Mm -hmm. It definitely isn't a race. Mm -hmm. You have to come equipped with the electrolytes, maybe a gallon of a water. Long sleeve. Literally five miles away from the area that we're walking in. Mm -hmm. Got gorillas. Mm -hmm. Like real live gorillas, oh, 10 yeah. feet mm -hmm. tall. <laughs> Not 10, 10 feet. feet. They tall mm -hmm. as shit. Mm -hmm. Biggest shit, ready to knock your head off. 
Yeah, that's why the guys were with us, really. That's, to that's make really sure we were good. Was. Yeah, they, um, had, they had a soldier. They had a so <laughs> like they had tour guides, mm -hmm. but then they also had a soldier to mm -hmm. represent us from the Rwandian perspective. Because mm -hmm. mind you, Lake Kivu, Mount Bishoke, etc., are fairly close to Congo. Oh yes, yes, yes. So during the time that we went, there were political skirmishes or political unrest mm -hmm. between Rwanda and Congo. So there was quite the concern mm -hmm. that we're Anything tourists. Anything could happen, yeah. Anything could happen. Yeah, well, that's actually kind of scary when you think about it. But I guess when I travel, I just, maybe I just don't think about these things, but I just like, <laughs> in my mind, I don't even be thinking about that. Wow, that's kind of scary when you think no, about it. No, no, that's part of, that's part of like one of our biggest moments. We're on Lake Kivu, we're in a yeah. nice, beautiful motorized boat. I got a DSLR, I got a Sony A7 He was camera. about to get us got. <laughs> it's a big joint. He was about to get us got, y'all. In reality, from the perspective of the soldiers that were parading the Lake Kibu, mm -hmm. when they saw my camera and how I was taking pictures of the environment, they yeah. they easily thought that I was a reporter. Yeah. Or simply an enemy. So they come through to us on, in the middle of a lake. In the middle they of make lake. us come to them. Middle of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's and actually very, scary. very extremely intimidating there because their boat got a turret. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They right? were it serious. Had the, they had the big joint, big guns. Yeah, yeah, I remember. They was really to take it. They was ready to take us out if we acted some type of way. Did you tell your family about that oh, happening? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they that was like, kind of scary. I but in, Cam to in Cameroon, that. they would have just killed us. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! That's not funny. <laughs> That's not funny. That was so, but the thing is, is Lake Kivu. So we were at Mount Basoke, but Lake Kivu was further. And Lake Kivu was like, you can see the Congo right on Lake Kivu. So yeah, that actually, when you think about it, it's kind of scary. But y'all, please don't let this scare you. Like, just go. Be mindful. Experience it. Just be mindful of these things. We aren't saying this to scare you. I want y'all to go. Please go. Make your own judgments of the countries, the cities, all the things. Be respectful. And, yeah, be respectful of the culture and the people. And remember, even if you are like in the diaspora, just remember like we're going and we're kind of, you're supposed to like assimilate to the culture, not like say, oh, this is this is what it's like in the States and this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to try to assimilate. So just keep that in mind. So that's the first excursion. We could talk about the next excursion we went on. The second excursion that we went on, they're not in any particular order was <music> Fazenda Sangha. It's an outdoor attraction with beautiful opportunities. They had zip lining. Mm -hmm. They had ATV rides. They had horseback riding. Human, like, uh, chess. They had, like, the big chess. They had super big chess boards where you, like, you could step in and act like you was a horse or something like that. Or act like you was a, a knight. Yeah, this place had the best food that I tasted so far in Kigali. For sure. That's they, not why we went, but they had the best food that I tasted so far. Absolutely beautiful views, too. Oh, yes, yes, they did. Overlooking the city skyline, mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, so they had the best food that I've tasted. It's unfortunate that it was raining that day that we went. A lot of the like zip lining and things we could do like horse riding, they weren't operating. They were still doing doing horse riding, but you would have to like get wet. So we pretty much just ate. <laughs> We just no. ate and chilled, but it was a nice experience to watch like the view while we ate. So that's a cool one to add to your list. It was cool. I didn't know that they had like an activity. I didn't know they had a place like that. So it was cool to discover that place. I think one of Noel's friends mentioned it to us, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Nonetheless, like, definitely check out Trip TripAdvisor for excursion ideas. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And additionally, this is a, this is a major life hack that we about to put on, put y'all on to. It might be cheaper to get to book on TripAdvisor rather than pulling up to the facility and then mm -hmm. buying a ticket on site. Mm -hmm. So definitely think about whether you should purchase your ticket on TripAdvisor before pulling up to your destination. Yes. Okay, so that was our second one for Zenda. The first was 
Mount Basoke and Lake Kivu, then Placinda. The next place we went to was... The Genocide Memorial Museum. We'll just stick with those three, right? We'll just stick sure. with those three. Kivu, yeah. Four? Yeah, and Lake Kivu. So it was really four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but two were in one. And that was, y'all, that was like my favorite part of... Well, it's not my absolute favorite part of the trip, but... It was one of my favorite parts of the trip because like I said before, I didn't know much about the Rwandan genocide, which I think before I decided to go, you were asking me like, what do you want to see? <laughs> I didn't have clear ideas. You know, I've heard of the Rwandan genocide before, but like I didn't know exactly what it was. Did you go before we went? I had an idea of what the war was caused over but i didn't know about the dynamics of each of the tribes the hootsies and the tootsies well let me tell you about it right the <laughs> history major yes so i just wrote down some notes about what i learned during the tour so basically like i said before i did not know much about it but i learned more i think i want to like research a bit more about it and bring a video to you all to go into detail but this is what we got so the rwanda genocide started april 7th 1994. i think it's interesting that I was able to learn how recent the genocide was because I think we, we like to think that some of these things happened like way back in the day but like 1994 that's like kind of recent I was born in 1997 96 so, baby you were born in 96 really maybe <laughs> I was born in 1997. Can't have the government, can't have the government <laughs> officials out there. Okay, my point is that a lot of the things that have <laughs> happened in the past are actually pretty recent or more recent than we think they are. So the Rwandan genocide launched like officially April 7, 1994, and it lasted for three months and ended July 15th in 1994. There were 800,000 lives lost. That's just like an approximate number that they've given. But like the gist of it, and you should do your own research, the gist of it was there were three groups in Rwanda at the time, the Hutus, and then there were the Tutsis, and then there were the Twas. But I actually have questions because during the during the museum visit, we weren't told much about what who the Twas were, what they did, like, you know, what were they doing during the genocide? Were they helping people? I didn't get that information. Did you? No, I, I, I don't, don't remember. I don't yeah. The Hutsis and the Tutsis are the main tribal groups that I really remember. Yeah, the main ones. So basically, the Hutus were the majority, like population wise. The Tutsis were the minority population wise. And so basically, Germany came in to colonize Rwanda. And then also, Belgium came in to colonize. And they encouraged, specifically, Belgium encouraged like division between the two groups. So before they had these different roles, and they were content with the different roles they had. One group was like the herders of the cows, and then the other group was more so like the farmers. And so when Belgium came in to colonize Rwanda, they created this division and record keeping based on which ethnic group you were part of. So basically they made the minority group in numbers, which was the Tutsis, they were fewer in numbers, but they made them seem like they were elite compared to the Hutus. So they raised up the Tutsis who were less in number and made them seem like they were elite because they were the cow herders. And then they made the Hutus, who were the majority in numbers, they made them seem like they were lesser than the Tutsis. And they just named them as like ordinary farmers. So if you were a Hutu, you were less than. And this was like the division they created. So imagine if you were living during that time or you were in their shoes, if you were a Hutu and you're being told that like you can't do certain things or you're less than, you're going to start to build this resentment. And that's what happened. So there was division. But the kicker is, and this happens often in history of colonizing Africa in general, the Belgians, they left. So they left. And then there's this system and this division where the Hutus are made to feel less than and then the Tutsis are still elite, basically. But Belgium is gone and the Hutus are like, no, we're not having this, basically. And so they basically rebel and then the government in Rwanda becomes Hutu, like, base. You checking my facts? Are they... <laughs> All facts are accurate. 
Yes. And additionally, go do your own research. Too. Yes, do your own research as well. And so after Belgium left, basically that system is in place. There's resentment. So the Hutus, you know, they come into power and they want their get back. They want their get back. And so they start making all these laws and these things to go against the Tutsi. Some of the Tutsi leaders leave Rwanda and uh, I'm skipping a bunch. Like I said, I'll make a separate video going into detail. But the thing that like the icing on the cake that sparked the genocide because these things happened prior was the Hutu president was shot down. His plane was shot down and we went to the site where his plane was and they didn't know who it was, but they assumed it was the Tutsi person. And so that sparked the genocide. And I'm not, I, I don't want to seem like insensitive. I don't like smiling and stuff, but like, yeah, it was beautiful to go to the site. And then the woman who just gave the overview of everything, you could tell she was really passionate about it. She was really passionate and she was proud to talk about the history. And some people are actually still living who were alive during that time of the genocide. So you're welcome for your summary. And did you have anything you wanted to add? What I will add is that the were Rwandan Genocide Museum was actually used to host a lot of diplomats mm -hmm. and political officials, mainly because it was such a tall structure that they could see the outlay of the land mm -hmm. in the immediate Kigali area and then plan strategic defenses based upon that. And this is the information that I guess we, we that we learned from going from going and from the tour guide mm -hmm. and actually getting on the top of the museum, because uh, as you'll see in some of the clips that we show in B-roll, you could literally see everything from that 360 view. Everything. It was so stinking beautiful. Oh, my gosh. That was really beautiful. And then the other surprising thing that I really appreciate it. I mean, it's a lot of information. So you might want to do it over the course of days, just like the, the African-American History Museum here. You got to do it over the course of several days. But they had like one that was like how it started, right, leading up to the genocide. And then the other one went to was like, how did how did it end? What was the second one? It was like, absolutely. how did they end the genocide? Oh, yeah, it was like how it started and then how they ended it. And I think they have multiple memorial museums. For, for sure. The, the memorial museums weren't only in, in the same place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which means that that was yet another opportunity for us to get in our public transportation and mm -hmm. you know see more of the city mm -hmm. but also understand the issues from two different perspectives yeah oh my gosh it was just so beautiful y'all it's like it reminds me of like you can research something all day on the computer but to like go and like experience it in person i love that type of learning because at least for me it sticks in my mind more than like i'm just like listening to a teacher or just like looking things up online so i love that so those were some of our excursions in kigali to name a, a few or all <laughs> <laughs> to name a few yes those were all of our excursions okay so that's it for this video those were our three categories we talked about transportation we talked about excursions and we talked about infrastructure y'all if you want the next three categories you need to head over to dr flex's channel we're gonna put the link below for the video and we're going to be talking about the next three categories on his channel don't forget to don't forget to comment <laughs> like subscribe oh my gosh pull up to africa right now right now okay what are you waiting for no i actually know what you might be waiting for but if it's fear of being safe of you know anything don't don't let the fear stop you just go ahead and go do your research and uh, reach out to us if you would like we'll put our socials below too if you have any questions about kigali if you're interested in going and don't forget to head over to his channel comment below to let us know if anything resonated with you and on that note, I love you all and I will see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.